might have been seen as problematic by uh, by some of the students, maybe even threatening? Um, I don't. I don't see how someone would rationally think it was threatening. Um, I, I could see how it might challenge their existing ideas, but for me, that's, that's the spirit of the university, is challenging ideas that you already have. Yeah. Is one or multiple students who have come forward saying that this is something that they were concerned about and that it made them uncomfortable. You're perfectly welcome to your own opinions, mm -hmm. but when you're bringing it into the context of the classroom, that can become problematic. And that can become something that is that creates an unsafe learning environment for students. But when they leave the university, they're going to be exposed to these ideas. So I don't see how I'm doing a disservice to the class by exposing them to ideas that are really out there. And I'm sorry I'm crying. I'm stressed out because this That's to me okay. is so wrong. It's so wrong. As you know, that is an excerpt from an interrogation of Lindsay Shepard, a young woman who is a master's student at Wilfrid Laurier University. She was being persecuted. I'm not going to say prosecuted because that implies rules and norms. She was being persecuted, bullied, to use a phrase, by politically correct professors. You heard one of them there saying she was creating an unsafe learning environment for daring to show a short clip of Professor Jordan Peterson in the context of a debate. Unbelievable. Well, very thoughtfully. Lindsay Shepard recorded that conversation. I don't think people would have believed that it could have been that bad had she not reported it, recorded it. Well, she managed to beat back that persecution just through the sheer weight of public opinion. But the attacks on her continued. I think it's safe to say that Lindsay Shepard has been blackballed and blacklisted in academia. That's not just my opinion, it's Lindsay Shepard's own opinion. And in fact, in the recent days, she has filed a $3.6 million lawsuit against Wilfrid Laurier for doing just that, for making her unemployable because of their aspersions. Joining us now via Skype is her lawyer, Howard Levitt, familiar to our viewers. He's a, a high-profile lawyer. He's written six legal textbooks. Uh, but he's not just a scholarly uh, actor. He writes popular law columns for the National Post. What a pleasure to have him with us. Howard, nice to see you again. And I'm delighted that you're representing Lindsay Shepard. I feel that she's in good hands. Well, so am I. I'm delighted I'm representing Lindsay Shepard. I'll make sure she's in good hands. Well, and I'm not just praising you uh, because I, I like you. I, I, I know that she went to you when she was being interrogated for help to navigate the university's uh, attacks on her, and you gave her counsel even in that first instance, am I right? Yes, I did. Right from the outset, we refused to participate in the investigation the university held. We didn't trust its bona fide-ness, and everything since then has proved that we were right. Give me a couple of examples. I mean, you're, you have uh, expertise. One of the things you write about a lot in the National Post is employment law, as in there's a right way to fire someone in a wrong way, a right way to have an internal hearing in a wrong way. Can you list for me, in your view, some of the things that Wilfrid Laurier did wrong? Because, of course, a university should have the ability to take a student, a professor, a teaching assistant to task if they do something genuinely wrong. But tell me procedurally and substantively some of the things that Wilfrid Laurier did that just are, were wrong, wrong, wrong. Well, first of all, I didn't follow any of their own procedures, any of them, and I delineate that in detail in the statement of claim. Secondly, they invented a fictitious complaint or complaints. We just heard that in the short passage you played about the complaint or complaints. There were no complaint or complaints, and they lied about that. And in fact, when Rab Buchanan apologized initially, he said, well, really, I had to. While apologizing, he said, well, I really had to deal with the complaints I received. And of course, there were no complaints, hmm. as we've absolutely ascertained. Hmm. Thirdly, they viciously attacked her. And it's one thing to reprimand someone for something they do that's wrong, but it has to be wrong. And what she did wasn't wrong. In fact, if you look at the Wilfrid Laurier Act, which gives us its jurisdiction legally, it's to promote free inquiry. Hmm. Well, they, exactly, hmm. they did exactly the opposite. And they were brutal and abusive, three on one for 55 minutes. And then... 
after she leaves Rabbi Buchanan's tutelage, if I can call it that, she gets appointed to another professor who's already taken a public position against her hmm. and then treats her in a way that she has real complaint with following that. Yeah. So everything I've done from beginning to end has been atrocious. Now, the 55-minute interrogation, which so many of us have heard, was shocking, and I think it rallied so many. I, I was even pleased that uh, reporters who generally are sympathetic to political correctness, they were so shocked by this one instance, by the recording, that I think they rallied to Lindsay Shepard's side. I was actually pleased with the mass of reporters in Canada, commentators. I think they were generally on her side, because it was so egregious. But that's what happened in their private interrogation. Did the university also have a bit of a PR strategy to throw Lindsay under the bus in response to her uh, recording? I mean, the, the interrogation itself was bad enough, and we heard her breaking into tears. And I met Lindsay Shepard. She was at our Rebel Live conference just a couple weeks ago. She's actually, she seems to me to be a very sensitive person. Like, I don't think she's a battle warrior who loves to fight. I mean, she, she struck me as someone who was pushed into this role unwillingly almost. Did they abuse her in public in other ways too, Howard? Destiny sought her out for, for certain in this case. And now she realizes what an important mission she's inadvertently become part of. And she doesn't want what's happened to her to continue happening. She realizes how, how treacherous campus life is mm -hmm. and how hard people have to fight to purify it from the, from the rancor of political correctness on campus. Yeah. So uh, since she's been treated, anyway, go ahead with your question as we're starting. No, no, that, that was a good point. I mean, you're, you're confirming my sense that she, she didn't choose this. She was thrust into it, but she's risen to the occasion. I'm sorry, I sort of put a double-barreled question at you. Let me go back to the other part. Um, other than that interrogation, has the university done, I haven't read the statement of claim yet, but maybe we can post it underneath this video for people to read. I'd like to read it carefully all the way through. And I know that it's your allegations, the university has yet to reply with their statement of defense, but I look forward to reading it. Um, I can't, as you know, I'm limited in what I can say publicly. It's a little bit like the um, Casey Hill case where he was sued for a million dollars for talking about a statement of claim on the, on the or, the, or just outside the legislature. Right. So I don't want to be accused of that. So I don't want to delineate the grounds, but I can say this. Mm -hmm. A department chair went into her class and did something that was embarrassing to her immediately after. Then she was appointed to be under another professor who had already publicly attacked her and her position. And she says, and I delineate them in my statement of claim, that professor then did three more things huh. that were injurious and damaging to her. Huh. And another professor also gone in on the act. And again, that's talked about in my statement of claim, but she just seemed to be bullied and harassed from start to finish. It After. sounds that way. Well, I, I'd like to post, uh, obviously it's filed in court, so it is now a publicly available document. I'd like to post that under this video. I think our people may not be uh, sophisticated uh, lawyers by training, but I think they'll have enough uh, common sense and knowledge to read through with great interest. And it'll be her side of the story finally told in full. That's how, I mean, I haven't read it yet, but I, I look forward to reading the details. And I understand why you don't want to um, articulate everything on TV as opposed I to just in court. I don't want to give the other side an opportunity to file any counter. Got it. Got, I, I take your point. And that's very, I'm, and I can, I can see right away that it's very wise that she's chosen you to be her counsel. Now, when you file okay. a legal uh, document. Okay. Just, just so we're clear for your, for your uh, listeners and viewers, um, when you read it, it will be very easy to understand. I wrote it with that in mind. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you did because there's a court of law and there's the court of public opinion. And I think this case is important in both cases. Uh, for people who don't have kids at university or who themselves have not been on university in a while, they probably don't <clears throat> quite understand how gravely academic freedom has been jeopardized. Jordan Peterson has shone a bit of light on that. So I think this case will have a salutary public policy impact. Um, well, I, well, I hope so. You know, one thing that's very interesting, this year, in fact, yesterday, 
the university reports just came out on enrollment universities and who is people's first students first choice and how many have enrolled or applied to different universities. Wilfrid Laurier of all Ontario universities did the worst. Wow. Both wow. in choices and in less enrollment generally. Obviously, people here that either students and parents of students heard about all of this and said, I don't want my kid or I don't want myself to be going to Wilfrid Laurier. It's obviously of the 40 or 50 universities in the province, the fact that it came absolutely worse and by significant margins huh. is telling. Is, isn't that true? And what a, what a reality check on the university that's, that's an echo chamber that probably thinks what they're doing is completely normal because to them it is because they're just rebreathing each other's air. Whereas when the public <laughs> sees this, they say, yikes, um, we're just going to slowly back away from Laurier and go literally anywhere else. That's a very interesting point. Now, um, signaling somehow helps them. And in fact, people get it. Yeah. It, to me, one of the main reasons that Ford did so well, mm -hmm. despite his particular blemishes, is that people had just had it. Yeah the political correctness of Kathleen Wynn, and the, they thought the NDP was more of the same. Isn't that interesting? Isn't now, um, just in terms of the legal steps, because our people follow lawsuits, you filed, I, I take it was called a statement of claim. The university yeah. has a certain period of time to reply. They can perhaps ask for an extension, which, is, no yeah, which is normally granted just out of a courtesy. But th this thing, sure. it, it seems to me that their statement of defense will be interesting because it'll give an insight into their mind of how they justify this conduct. But I have to tell you what, what excites me a lot about this is the documentary discovery, as in the ability of you and Lindsay to have access to internal university records, whether it's emails, memos, staff meetings. There are some things that are subject to their lawyer's privacy, solicitor client privilege, but if they had a staff meeting, if they had memos, that would all be disclosable to you. Am I right? It's absolutely right. And at one point, here's one bit from the statement of claim from our next professor. This professor posted a syllabus. And then her syllabus was a land acknowledgement. You know what I'm talking about, the Aboriginal land acknowledgements head of every speech these days everywhere. But right. in any event, she thought this was just a, a ridiculous piece of political correctness to show a land acknowledgement at the top of a syllabus. So she took the land acknowledgement, the little excerpt from the top of the syllabus, and tweeted it out, saying, isn't this ridiculous? We're now even having territorial acknowledgements on syllabus. Yeah. So the professor called her on the carpet and told her she must delete it right away. She said, I'm not doing it. Delete my tweet. No, I'm not deleting it. She said, you are violating my intellectual property. Oh, my God. And she said, this is, this is ridiculous. And she said she was going to call complain to the dean if she didn't take it down. She didn't take it down. And the dean came back to her and said it's not her intellectual property, Professor Nicholson's. So what happens next? We know that there was a meeting held by the dean with certain members of the faculty immediately after this. I'd love to know what was discussed. Yeah. We'll find out what was discussed, an examination for discovery, and if any minutes were taken. That's an example of the kind of thing that we're going to find out. Were these professors reprimanded? Rambucana, Pimlot, and Adrian Joel? I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah. We get to find out everything. Why did Deborah McClatchy, the president, refuse to not say, I'm giving a double negative, let me put it more simply. On Steve Pakin's TVO, right after this all broke, Pakin asked McClatchy repeatedly, did Lindsay Shepard do anything wrong? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she, in terms of showing the Jordan Peterson clip, and McClatchy would not say that she had done nothing wrong, huh. long as she had done something wrong. Huh. Well, it was only after, of course, there was massive public outcry that then she tried to sanitize the whole thing with an investigation and then admitted that she had done nothing wrong. But that was not her initial reaction. Because my understanding, yeah. McClatchy is historically a social justice warrior, too. And... I'd like to know the memos between McClatchy's office and others. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to see if they were disparaging her privately while claiming to be fair to her publicly. I'd like to see if they're 
if they if the fix was in privately while they were claiming to have fair procedure publicly. I think that and just before you go on on that point, what memos were there just before that meeting? Yeah, yeah, because of course to have any sort of procedural fairness. The meaning has to be meaningful, as in she could say something that would exculpate her. But if the fix was in to begin with, then it wasn't a real investigation. It was a bullying session because there could be no other outcome. This is very interesting. And uh, as we're to remove herself from that particular interrogation, inquisition, we know from watching it, the fix was in. Yeah. We know that. This it is was, fascinating. I look forward to reading this case in detail and following it as it goes every step of the way. I have to tell you, the more I think through the, the documentary discovery and the oral, uh, I know you can examine different people. Are, are you suing the university only or are there oh, no. particular oh, no. individuals? It's triumvirate. The university, Rambucana, Humlot, and Joel. Uh, and you know what? I just from watching some of those professors, uh, they're so chatty and they're so entitled. I don't think they're going to be able to keep their mouths shut. I think they're going to go off on long rants. I have to say, I, I believe in my bones that the essential claim that Lindsay's being blackballed by this university's conduct. I believe that in my bones, and I and I think we'll see what the judge has to say, we'll see what the statement of defense has to say, but I think that this suit has some merits on the face of it. But I am much, much more interested in the revelations that will be uh, elicited by this. It was the revelation of their private interrogation that got this whole story going to begin with. It was a secret recording, and I think now you're going to blow that up tenfold with all this documentary discovery. This might be the most important academic freedom lawsuit in a generation, and I'm not just indulging in hyperbole. You've got the worst case that we can think of in memory with the worst actors, and now you're going to get their internal memos. I think this is going to be a blockbuster. It's, it's fabulous. I just hope it doesn't settle because there's, so, there's such an important social good in my view, and I gather yours for prosecuting this case. The social justice warriors do not, will no longer be able to believe they can conduct themselves the way they have for the last so many years with impunity. Yeah. That the light will be shown on them and will go after their pocketbooks. Yeah. Well, of course, the decision to settle is Lindsay's alone. But from my few interactions with her and my observations of her, I think she's motivated by the public Principal. interest. I don't think she's just That's out right. for a buck. She's never no. asked for money. She's never set up a GoFundMe page. So she's, she she's, doesn't look like she's trying to be an entrepreneur for financial gain. I actually believe right. in her heart she's motivated by this. It takes someone like that to take on an institution. Howard, I'm delighted that you are the lawyer. I feel like you're uniquely situated for it. This is very interesting, and please keep us posted as this moves through the courts. And obviously, we're not going to have Lindsay on to talk about it in a manner that would in any way jeopardize the legal integrity of the case. So maybe we can talk to you from time to time, because we know you'll be very careful about that. Ezra, look, I'm a lawyer, but I'm also politically active, as you probably know, and um, it's my mission, too. Yeah. I have personal interest in stopping the type of nonsense that occurred here. Well, I'm thrilled. I know that. And it's, I'm glad that you confirmed that. And our viewers are supporting you. And we've kept you a long time here. And I know you're very busy. I mean, you're actually, you are a working lawyer at Levitt LLP. So thank you for spending the time with us. I can't tell you how excited I am to have you on this file. Um, we talked with John Carpe, who's another public interest lawyer. And there's very few public interest lawyers on our side of the aisle on these things. So th on behalf of our viewers, let me say thank you. I feel like Lindsay's in good hands, and I feel like she will make an outstanding plaintiff. So good luck to us all. Yes. Thank you. All right. Well, that's very interesting. Thank you. That's Howard Levitt. He's an employment lawyer with Levitt LLP, the author of six legal textbooks. Of course, he's also a columnist for the National Post. And I am thrilled that he is representing Lindsay Shepard in The More I Think About It, The More I Think This Case Will Be Important for the Whole Country not just for Lindsay Shepard.
That's an excerpt from my daily TV show, The Ezra Levant Show. Normally it's behind a paywall, but I thought you'd like this video, so we put it on YouTube. Uh, if you want to subscribe to watch The Daily Show every day, including always two interviews a day and I read my hate mail, just click on this screen and become a premium member.